Now let's talk about the future research in food fermentation. What is actually needed and what is the direction in which scientists uh, and R&D people are working uh, in this specialized area of food fermentation. As you might have appreciated this by now that uh, fermentation industry, particularly food fermentation industry, is a very large industry uh, and there are a large number of products um, that are there in the market. Uh, and still there's a lot of potential for this kind of uh, products in the market because of the health benefits and the positive image of this kind of products. They add a lot of variety to our uh, daily life. So that is why these uh, uh, food fermentations are a very critical area. You would see a lot of uh, people and groups working in this area uh, to develop new and better products uh, resulting from food fermentation. So let's talk about what are the areas in which uh, the research is going and what is needed for the future research uh, directions in this particular uh, area. So as you know that there's always an ongoing struggle to keep looking for uh, better uh, strains uh, of uh, different microorganisms, uh, isolating those strains that are uh, better than the previous one which has got more uh, production efficiencies, uh, they can produce higher yield or they can be uh, also more unique, you know, or they can be more economical to produce better products. So looking at the strains, all from different sources, whether we induce certain mutations in them or whether we find the naturally present um, microbial strains, they are constantly being tested, uh, developed, and there are a lot of intellectual property or proprietary um, uh, strains, uh, they are being developed as well. So constantly there is a uh, new search uh, or an area that is uh, very much focused upon by many scientists. Then we have to, as, uh, as I earlier said in the previous lecture, that uh, real-time monitoring of these bioreactors, because this is a very challenging area uh, to understand that what is actually happening in a bioreactor. Uh, unlike the chemical reactions, these are very complex. Uh, these are the living organisms. It's a microbiological uh, system. They have got own dynamics. And then there is always a fear of contamination or uh, there are chances of lesser productivity or uh, lesser yield from uh, these microorganisms uh, due to any variable factor. So we have to actually control and look into the real life uh, diagnostics of these bioreactors. If you are able to uh, monitor uh, real-time measurements and look at the real-time measurement, uh, that can tell us about the condition of culture, uh, metabol metabolite formation on real-time basis. That would be very, um, very much welcome. It would be very much appreciated because this gives you uh, a time frame or a window to act if something goes wrong. If we have got procedures such as Longer uh, diagnostic procedures that take time, such as HPLC, as I earlier said, uh, that would take a lot, uh, a lot of time. And during this time, uh, your prices might might got get out of control. So real time monitoring and the development in this area, especially new and more biosensors and application of computer technologies, as I said, uh, real time monitoring would be very very much um, helpful uh, in development of this industry. Uh, another very important thing, uh, because it is very much related to uh, economics, uh, this is the recovery uh, rate. This is always a key factor for uh, any uh, final product that we get out of fermentation process in any food system. So recovery is the most important thing. This is like efficiency of a strain or microorganism to produce the end product, produce end product which are desirable. So if uh, we can recover higher amounts, that would be very useful. That would improve the, um, the cost uh, related to production and uh, it would be producing cheaper uh, raw material that would be more uh, viable for these production companies. Uh, another thing is that uh, there is a lot of research on genetic engineer and engineering and there is a lot of potential in the genetic engineering as well. Uh, but uh, again, uh, there are other factors, uh, although we cannot uh, undermine this area of genetic engineering to improve uh, this uh, fermentation process and technologies, 
but still there are a lot of other areas in which we need to uh, have uh, better control or grip uh, in order for this industry to grow. So um, there can be a lot of other new techniques that can be utilized. Uh, so difference in technique as we discussed about this PCS. This is one example of uh, developing materials which are suitable for making biofilms. So or having better techniques uh, to run these uh, processing systems that would be far more, uh, far more better, very much appreciated. And then another thing is the use of inexpensive uh, ingredients. Uh, or materials that are consistently that can be supplied for a longer time that would make uh, these uh, companies more viable. Then we can also keep on looking for exotic microbial uh, reservoirs in nature and the food industry. Uh, these are all the areas uh, I think they are the uh, everybody is for lookout in these areas to develop this fermentation industry because this industry is still very much focused. Uh, and it's very much concentrated in the developing uh, developed countries, but the developing countries uh, such as Pakistan, we still don't have the support network or the systems uh, to have such industries. So that's why we don't see many success stories in the fermentation uh, industry here. Uh, and I think one of the reason is the lack of this support uh, culture. For example, if we talk about the availability of raw material, consistent uh, availability of raw material, such as uh, corn, as we see in the, as an example, uh, if you can have the allied industry that support uh, these industries, that kind of research would also be very much useful, and that would encourage the production of more uh, products from fermentation technologies in food sector, particularly. <laughs>